I received a call from one of my clients off of YouTube last week, and he asked me a couple of questions uh, about the cost of living and had I done any updates on our original video of the cost of living here in Lakewood Ranch. So I thought, man, it's been about a year and a half. That would be a great topic for, for me to cover again. So I'm going to go over all the items that I tried to cover in that first video as far as uh, expenses for living here in the Lakewood Ranch area. And if that's of interest, stick around. I have all the details coming right up. Which looks better, one or two? Two or three? Three or four? Four or five? For a complete checkup, see your local realtor. Hello, it's Mark Bamig with Michael Saunders and Company. And in this channel, Living in Lakewood Ranch, I cover all the areas around Lakewood Ranch from Bradenton down to Sarasota and Siesta Key up to Anna Marie Island. So click that little subscribe button and ding the little bell every time I put on a new video, you'll be notified. So I wanna thank Doug and Kathy. Uh, they had called me this past week and they said, hey, can you give us an idea of updates on some of the cost of living for the area uh, of Lakewood Ranch? It would be helpful for us when we're planning our budget. And I said, I'd be more than happy to. So what I wanna do is I wanna start with uh, the price increases that we felt on the housing market in Lakewood Ranch for 2021. We saw an average increase of 26 in Lakewood Ranch last year. So that was a tremendous amount of growth for the price of housing. So we're figuring that with the uh, slight increase in interest rates um, and a decrease in the amount of COVID, uh, it's gonna put a lot less pressure on our demand here in the area. Although we do have quite a bit of demand in a very small supply from a new construction standpoint and also for uh, houses that are on the resale market. Now, one of the things I want to talk about is insurance rates. Insurance here for a single family home can run for an average size house anywhere from $800 to $1,800 a year. And that's going to depend on several things. Where is the house located? How old is the house? Is it built to the new uh, hurricane standards? Uh, those types of things. So all of that is going to be subjective to what the insurance rates actually end up being for the particular house that you might be interested in. So I'm in a house that was built in 2020. It has the hurricane all the way around and I think our insurance for a 3,100 square foot home is about $1,600 a year. And we have um, average, I would say average uh, rates for um, deductibles. Now, one thing I have noticed about Florida and I think I mentioned this in the other video as well, car insurance. That seems to be a little high here, especially compared to where I came from out of Atlanta, Georgia, when I came down here. The car insurance rates seem to be high, and, and I think that they are. I think most people feel that. So we have two mid-size SUVs. They're fairly newer. Matter of fact, both of them are 2018 models, and we pay about $2,600 a year for car insurance, which seems to be um, kind of funny when you think about it compared to the house. House, I hope, is more valuable than the two cars. So. And then um, the other thing is, is that flood insurance has, um, has taken a change. Now, flood insurance um, could be a little bit more affordable depending on where you live. If you're near the coast, it's gonna be higher. And if you're inland, it might be a little lower. So here in Lakewood Ranch, if you're on an average size home in a community, uh, flood insurance is probably gonna run about seven or $800 a year, which is probably a good thing to get because flood is from any external source. It doesn't have to be just from a hurricane or a, or a lot of wind uh, rain event. Now, another uh, cost that is, seems to be high for the Florida area is healthcare. Now, everybody has an issue with our healthcare system as far as the rates that we pay, and that's also gonna be very subjective. So, you know, just compare where you live now, and I would call a few insurance companies to find out what the rates would be when you move to the Florida area. So let's talk about utilities. So a lot of these communities here are gas communities. So we usually have gas cooking, gas hot water, and also if the pool is heated, a lot of them are uh, heated with gas. Our average, uh, for me personally, our average gas bill is about $80 a month and we don't heat the pool. Sometimes we'll heat the hot tub uh, on a rare occasion, but, and that doesn't add too much to the gas bill. It might increase at 20 bucks if I got in four or five times during the month. So gas is relatively inexpensive. Now that along with power, our power bill, I don't think we've ever had a power bill in this house over $150. And that's during the middle of the summer as well. We have two heat pumps, 
Um, and then of course we have the pool that runs every day. So our electricity is fairly inexpensive, comparatively speaking. Now everything here is basically on a heat pump. So during the winter months, when it gets really cold, if it gets down to 40 degrees, that electric heat pump is gonna kick on and you might see a little bit of a spike. I think ours for the month of February was about $105 for heating and, and cooling of the house during the, the month of February. Water, sewer, and trash. So if you're in Manatee County, which most of Lakewood Ranch is in Manatee County, so Manatee uh, furnishes the water, sewer, and trash, and that runs about $80 a month. Now, in that bill for us, we have reclaimed water for our sprinkler systems on our yard. So it waters the plants, it waters the grass, and that is included in that $80. And our particular homeowners association controls the amount of water that goes on the lawns. Some of them, in some of the associations, Associations, you're going to have a box in your house which you can control it yourself, but in our homeowners association, they take care of the watering schedules for the house. Is that good or bad? I don't really know. It's just the way it is. Now, what about HOA fees? If you look at any listing here in Lakewood Ranch, you can see them uh, as, as, as little as zero, so it's probably not in a neighborhood, or you could look at something that's as low as $129 a year, which is where I'm standing now in Lakewood Ranch Country Club. And you can pretty much bet if it's $129 a year, you're not getting any services, but in Lakewood Ranch Country Club, you are having, uh, it is a gated community uh, with a guard at the entrance. So you do have that going for you if you live in Lakewood Ranch Country Club. Now there's a bunch of individual developments, mainly many neighborhoods, uh, inside Lakewood Ranch Country Club and their fees will vary depending on if they have lawn maintenance, maybe cable and internet packed into their association dues. So each individual little subdivision inside the gates at Lakewood Ranch Country Club uh, may have different dues, but everybody is going to get the $129 a year tacked on to their homeowners association. It's just depending on if you have any extra services that are in your particular subdivision. And that, that kind of maintains throughout all of Lakewood Ranch, all the different subdivisions. Some of them have subsections in each one and they're all, the, all the fees vary. So if you can see fees that are four or $500 a quarter, pretty much you can assume that the lawn maintenance is included in that. Now, I always get a question as how much are the property taxes going to be? So for East Manatee County, which is Lakewood Ranch, it's going to be about 1.5% of the purchase price. And I'll put the exact multiplier in the bottom here, and that's going to get you pretty close to what you're going to expect to pay for your property taxes, and that includes the CDD fees. Pool maintenance. If you have a pool, what would you expect to pay for having a pool cleaned? Well. We have just changed companies because we were alerted that the company that we were using that was charging us $105 a month to maintain our pool, they came once a week, was going to $145. And I thought, well, I only get okay service, but okay was okay for $105, but it wasn't okay for $145. So we've made a change and we're trying a new uh, small person, small individual company to do our pool service. Uh, their fee is $95. They come once a week and I'll let you know how that progresses in another video, but they were recommended and I try and use somebody that's already in the neighborhood to make it more convenient for them because then they tend to show up more, you get better service, and it's a little bit easier to keep an eye on. Now, what if lawn care is not included in your homeowners association? There's pluses and minuses to that. If the association is taking care of your lawn care and you don't like the job you're doing, you can't fire them. All you're doing is paying somebody else to come and add more to whatever the services is that they're doing that you're pr probably not very satisfied with. If they're not included in your homeowners association, then you can hire who you want. It's gonna run you about 450 on average a quarter to have lawn maintenance. Now they charge that year round, even though they have less times that they come in during the winter and more times that they come in during the summer. Plan on about $450 a quarter if HOA is not included for uh, lawn maintenance in your community. That's about what it's gonna be for an average size lawn. Internet. That's probably the one thing that everybody wants is internet. And they want good internet service, especially if they are working from home. So we have two major, and we'll probably have some other ones, but two major providers for internet service here. One is Frontier, and the other one is Spectrum. Now, I've been on Spectrum since I've been in Sarasota and Manatee 
uh, for the last seven years. And we just cut the cable and got away from Spectrum and went to fiber optic with Frontier. So I'm in the preliminary stages. Of course, they're doing a very good job at the onset and uh, I'll let you know how that goes. But we pay about $70 a month for one gig service, upload and download. And of course it isn't exactly one gig. Every time I check it, it's about five or 600 upload and download. And we were only getting 400, paying for 400 uh, meg service with uh, Spectrum, but that was Spectrum with internet and TV. We didn't have a landline. So that ran us about $200 a month. So now we're doing what a lot of people are doing and call them cutting the cord and going away from the um, boxed service, so to speak, and getting just internet and streaming everything else. And the other thing I did was I bought an antenna. Now, I was thinking, oh, this isn't gonna work very well, but I bought an antenna that can go in your attic. And before I ran all the wires and everything, I just put it up in the attic, hooked it directly to the TV, did a scan and came up with 60 channels. And about 40 of them were high quality, high definition, uh, channels, local channels, and that did really, really well. So I was excited to see that. So then I went back to the trouble of mounting it permanently and, and running all the cables and the wires that I needed to do to make it look right. So now we're having stream TV for $70 a month with an antenna, which of course is zero. The initial cost of the antenna was about $200. And now we're gonna try out some local uh, services like maybe Sling TV or Roku and, and see how that works for us. Uh, one last thing I want to talk to, to you about is the uh, membership to Lakewood Ranch Country Club. There's been a lot of changes in the pricing system and also in what they offer. They used to have about six different options. You could be just social or just social and tennis or just social tennis and fitness. So now what they're offering is two different menus of services. One is golf, which is the all-in package. $35,000 to join initiation and then about $900 a month uh, to be able to play the three courses that are in Lakewood Ranch Country Club and Country Club East and that would be for, um, or for two people. Then you have the regular social uh, fitness with the tennis and the uh, water aerobics and all of that. And that is gonna run you $6,000 to join and then about $300 a month for the uh, dues. Now, all of those, whether it's golf or whether it's just the social with the fitness added, gives you access to both Country Club East and Country Club West uh, restaurants and bars and, and that kind of thing and all the social events that they have. So they've had a pretty good price increase and I also heard that the social membership they were putting on hold for a little while because they had such a backlog of people wanting to get in. The golf is about to be full but I still think that they're taking memberships at that $35,000 uh, initiation fee and that is not an equity membership that is just a one-time fee and if you try it for a couple of years and then you're out then there goes the um, initiation fee. Other than the increase in the fees at the Lakewood Ranch uh, Country Club the last thing I want to talk to you about is gas prices. I got gas last week premium unleaded uh, was three dollars and sixty four cents that was about February the 28th uh, so that's where our gas prices are right now. Of course, with things going on in the Russia and Ukraine, I have an idea that that might be starting to rise a little bit. So we will just keep monitoring that situation. And if you get value out of this video, click that little subscribe button, ding the little bell. Every time I put on a new video, you'll be notified. And uh, thanks again uh, to my uh, colleagues and to all the people that are helping me out on this YouTube channel. I know a lot of you contact me and I use my uh, business partners that are with me at Michael Saunders and Company for helping me show clients property. Keep calling. We appreciate it. Mark Bamig, Michael Saunders and Company.